All right, good morning and welcome to this uh, video solution uh, on the topic of linear momentum uh, to be precise uh, conservation of linear momentum. Uh, this question is from Resnick and Halliday. If you see this question, there is a specific word which is mentioned, uh, explosion, right? The, the piece of the block that you see uh, lying on the floor, it breaks into two parts after the explosion. And the two parts move left and right respectively and they encounter a, a frictional surface because the word kinetic friction is mentioned for both the sides due to friction the separated masses stop finally okay so uh, the biggest hint in this question given to you is the word explosion so so how do you solve such questions the fundamental thing is, if you are given a, a block, something like this, okay, and this block explodes, okay, it then becomes two blocks that start moving on the left and right. So, this is in one dimension uh, kind of situation. And uh, so, the this is leftward movement and the rightward movement. The concept you have to apply to solve these questions is pretty straightforward. It's a concept of conservation of linear momentum because there is no external force involvement, no external force is involved. Remember that. Okay. So since no external force is involved, the momentum of the overall system, which is after the collision. So these two okay these two the momentum which is the final momentum after some time when the collision happens and this is the initial momentum so i will just represent momentum with p so p i and this is p f if the initial momentum of a stationary block is zero because it is stationary the final momentum also needs to be zero individually these two are moving definitely with some momentum but the sum of momentum of L and the sum of momentum of the right block has to be zero because there is no external force. Whenever we talk about explosion type of questions, remember you need to ensure that you have law of conservation of momentum applied to the separated masses and equate to the, to the initial momentum of the system. So, the initial momentum of the system and the initial mom final momentum of the broken system never changes. Okay. So, the, the way you need to work this out is backwards because one of the masses that will break away, okay, will move through a distance. So, it does move through some distance. Uh, there is no friction here, you can see. Okay. So, when it, when that one part of the Whole, whole scheme it travels towards the left it you know this is the area where, the, where there is no friction and then after traveling a certain distance it stops right so that distance is given to be uh, you know 0.15 meters so point so the final velocity of the leftward block is zero and when it move enters the frictional surface let that velocity be initial velocity of L, which means when the, when the block, the left block started after the collision, immediately after the collision, it had a velocity of UL. So, this block UL traveled for some distance and it had a velocity which we need to find out and then it entered a zone of frictional surface which is this maybe and then it finally stopped here okay so this is the distance through which it stopped so if i do if i were to think about what was the initial velocity when it entered the frictional zone i will use v square minus u square is equal to 2as assuming the friction is providing constant deceleration so the final velocity is zero minus uh, sorry the final velocity is zero the initial velocity is is what we need to find out two multiply by mu n right so mu n is the frictional force experienced by the left block 
mu for the left block is known to you as 0 0.40 multiply by mu into mg so what is the mass of this block we need to find the mass of okay so the piece the l is 2 kg so mu into m into 10 i will keep it simple okay and the distance so this is this is the frictional force right this is mu k m g if i divide this by mass i get the acceleration which is 2 again so this goes away so u square minus u square is equal to 2a into s okay i have written the s as the distance through which it moves which is given to be 0.15 okay so i have written the standard uh, second equation of motion uh, because i want to find out what is its initial velocity when it enters the zone of the friction so it was moving with some velocity u after the collision and then it underwent a deceleration and the final velocity became zero so minus u square is equal to 2 into 0 0.40 and into 10 into 0 0.15 right so what is the and since this is deceleration i can put a negative sign here also uh, this particular thing which is your mass into its deceleration so this is minus a actually so this goes away right the negative signs cancel so u square is equal to 20 into 0.15 into 0 0.40 right so 2 uh, so this is 20 into 15 by 100 into 0 0.4 right so 25s are 5 3s are and u square is equal to 1.2 is the so you have to find the value of u here which is square root of 1.2 okay we can find the square root of 1.2 uh, easily so we know the initial velocity of the left block is this okay so this is step number one same logic applies to the rightward block okay so we do not know the mass of the rightward block let it be whatever it is apply the equation of motion again for the now we are looking at the right word block okay so let's look at the rightward block which is it also comes to stand still it becomes stationary so zero square uh, minus mu g so i think let's look into the kinetic friction of the right hand side i think it is given to be uh, mu right is 0 0.5 so this is 0 0.5 so u square zero square minus the initial velocity of the rightward block is equal to minus 2 into a minus sign because it decelerates so i'm putting a negative sign to it acceleration uh, is mu 0 0.5 into g and the distance through which it moves the rightward block let's look into that also so the distance through which it moves is 0 0.25 right it's 0 0.25 0 0.25 so minus sign goes away so u square is equal to uh, 20 into 5 by 10 multiply by 25 by 100 and uh, this is 20 into 5 100 so goes and so u square is left as 25 by 10 and therefore u square is equal to under root of 2.5 sorry u meter per second so we also know the velocity of the rightward block when it entered the frictional zone I hope the situation is making sense to you that we have uh, we're using two concepts one is the uniform accelerated motion to find out the initial velocity with which the blocks enter the frictional surface and the velocity which we have got for left and right now is very useful because that's a velocity with which they separated right they separated after the collision now the momentum of this block whatever it is you know we can write it as some momentum of the left block which is mass of the left block multiplied by the velocity of the left and this is the velocity which we found out 
using the second equation of motion plus the mass of the rightward block multiplied by the just found velocity u r what why i'm adding these two because this is the momentum of the system after the collision right so we know since there is no external force involved it has to be equal to the initial momentum which is zero actually and we are supposed to find i think the mass of the rightward block so the mass of the left block is given to be 2 kg so i'll just put the value here as 2 okay 2 multiply by i think we found this to be under root square root of uh, the velocity of ul is square root of 1.2 okay so we'll just write it as square root of under root 1.2 and since it's a leftward block it is going leftward I will just use sign convention. The momentum is leftward plus the momentum. So MR I need to find out multiply by under root of 2.5 is equal to 0, right? This is the situation of uh, unexploded block, like a single block. And this is the situation of exploded block. But the momentum is not compromised. Momentum remains the same. And so MR is equal to... Uh, you know, I can take this on the right hand side. So, 2 into under root of 1.2 divided by under root of 2.5. And this cancels away roughly 2. If I were to do an approximation, so MR is equal to, uh, you know, 2 into 1 by under root 2. Sorry, 2 itself. And so, this becomes under root 2. So, MR, MR is equal to 1.4 kgs, right? So, you are able to find the value of uh, the mass of the right and rightward block so i'll just summarize the way we approach this remember if you see the word explosion in a question straight away ensure that the law of conservation of momentum the final momentum of the system which is made up of multiple masses okay it could be four masses m1 m2 m3 okay and each one of them may have individual velocities after the collision but the momentum of the sum of momentum of each one of them you know uh, p2 and p3 plus p4 cannot change whatever is the initial momentum of the system in the form of a single ball or a single mass that if it is stationary it is zero if it was moving with certain velocity it had some momentum whatever it was calculate that initial momentum of the large blocks let's say and its initial velocity put it here as the initial momentum i have used stationary body so i put zero but it can be some initial momentum before the explosion took place but after the collision you can have as many components or you know uh, the parts of the masses each having some velocity the total momentum does not change because such a system is a closed system okay the word used is it's a closed system because it is not exposed to any uh, intern, you know, external force. A an explosion is an internal uh, force and therefore fails to change the momentum of the system. So I hope this made sense to you. Important question. You will encounter these questions, uh, more of these in you know, many dimensions. So in x-axis, uh, y-axis, z-axis, the, after the explosion, the masses have moved in different velocities at different angles now do not be shy of, of applying this concept in x-axis separately y-axis separately and z-axis separately calculate the momentum of the broken masses after the explosion in x-axis separately it will also remain conserved the cal calculate the uh, you know the momentum of individual masses in y-axis add them up put it equal to the initial momentum of the system in y-axis and so on and so forth so momentum will not change irrespective of direction i hope this made sense notice the keywords closed system explosion law of conservation of momentum simple questions and uh, you will encounter these in your examination all the best to you i hope you liked it if you did please do give me some comments thank you very much